हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम रितेश वर्मा फ्रॉम महाराजा अग्रसेन कॉलेज यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन मॉड्यूल अकाउंटिंग कॉन्सेप्ट्स फ्रॉम पेपर अकाउंटिंग एंड फाइनेंशियल एनालिसिस लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव्स ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल आफ्टर गोइंग थ्रू द मॉड्यूल द स्टूडेंट्स विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द मीनिंग ऑफ अकाउंटिंग कॉन्सेप्ट एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ वेरियस कॉन्सेप्ट and examples regarding each concept the main aim of business is to earn profits for earning profits businessmen will need to deal with the outside world and make efforts to attract more investors for this purpose every business maintains a record of all the transactions taking place throughout the year so that at the end of each year information regarding the financial strength of firm is disclosed to its owners as well as to other interested parties and the information so disclosed should be free from any kind of biasness and should be easily understood by every party in order to maintain this level of consistency the accountants should follow certain rules and procedures while maintaining the record known as accounting concepts and conventions following these concepts and conventions would maintain stability and uniformity in the accounting world accounting concept meaning the term concept also known as postulates refer to such ideas which are accompanied with different accounting procedures these are the fundamental ideas or the general assumptions underlying the theory and practice of financial accounting and are broad working rules for all accounting activities and developed by accounting profession the important concepts are listed below one business entity concept two money measurement concept three going concern concept four cost concept five dual aspect concept 6 accounting period 7 matching concept 8 realization concept 9 objective evidence concept 10 accrual concept business entity concept the concept implies that a business unit is separate and distinct from the person who supply capital to it means that business has a separate legal entity from its owners for the purpose of accounting the business and its owners are to be treated as two separate entities irrespective of the form of organization a business unit has got its own separate identity as distinguished from the person who own or control or who are its owners business is kept separate from the proprietor so that transactions of business may not be recorded with him in case this concept is not followed affairs of the business will be mixed with the private affairs of the proprietor and the true picture of business will not be revealed thus in the books of the sole trader a firm or limited company only business transactions are recorded and no note is taken of the personal transactions of the sole proprietor the partners of the firm and the shareholders respectively for example if the proprietor of the business invests rupees 6 lakhs into the business it will be deemed that he has given that much of money to the business as a loan which will be shown as a liability 
in the books of the firm. On receipt of the amount, cash account will be debited and proprietor's capital account will be credited. Similarly, on withdrawal of the amount from the business for personal use of the proprietor, the proprietor capital account will be debited and cash account will be credited. Money measurement concept. The concept of money measurement states that only those transactions, events and happenings in the organization which can be expressed in terms of money such as sale of goods, receipt of income etc are to be recorded in the book of accounts. All those transactions that cannot be expressed in monetary terms such as appointment of the manager, creativity of its production department should not be recorded. The advantage of maintaining business transactions in terms of money is that money serves a common denominator by means of which homogeneous factors about a business can be expressed in terms of numbers which are capable of additions and subtractions in future. For example, the business unit has the following assets on 31st March 2015. Cash in hand and bank, rupees 50,000. Sundry debtors, rupees 45,000. Furniture, 400 tables. Bills receivable, rupees 16,500. In this example, furniture is not expressed in terms of money. Therefore, the items given in the different units of measurement cannot be added together to get an idea of the total value of the assets owned by the enterprise. To get an idea of the total value of the assets, all items should be expressed in terms of money as given. Example, cash in hand and bank, rupees 50,000, sundry debtors, 45,000, furniture, rupees 15,000, bills receivable, rupees 16,500, total, rupees 126,500. The money measurement concept faces certain limitations. It restricts the scope of accounting because it is not capable of recording transactions which cannot be expressed in terms of money though being important. It does not take care of the effects of inflation because it assumes a stability of money measurement concept. Going concern concept. The concept of going concern assumes that a business firm would continue to carry on its operations indefinitely for a fairly long period of time and would not liquidate or would not be liquidated or terminated in the foreseeable future. This is an important assumption of accounting as it provides very basis for showing the value of assets in the balance sheet. A business unit is deemed to be going concern and not a gone concern. This assumption provides much of the justification of recording fixed assets at original cost and depreciating them in a systematic manner year after year without reference to their current realizable value. For example, a business purchases a machinery 
for a sum of rupees 40,000. What the business is buying really is the service of the machinery that the business shall be getting over the estimated lifespan, say 10 years. It will not be fair to charge the whole amount of rupees 40,000 from the revenue of the year in which the asset is purchased. The assumption regarding the continuity of the business allows to charge from the revenue of a period only that part of asset that has been consumed or used to earn that revenue in that period and carry forward the remaining amount to the next years. Thus, the business may charge rupees 4000 every year for 10 years from the profit and loss account. In case the continuity assumption is not there, the whole cost that is rupees 40,000 in the present example will need to be charged from the revenue of the year in which the machinery was purchased. Quick revision. The going concern concept states that a business enterprise will not be sold in the near future. The fact that business is separate from its owner is best exemplified by the business entity concept. Cost concept. The cost concept states that an asset is recorded in the books at the price paid to acquire it and that this cost is the basis for all subsequent accounting for that asset. This does not mean that the asset will always be shown at cost, but it means that the acquiring cost becomes basis for all future accounting for the asset. Asset is recorded at cost at the time of its purchase but is reduced systematically in its value by charging depreciation by following any of the method. In simple terms, the market value of an asset may change with the passage of time but for accounting purpose it continues to be shown in the books at its book value. That is the cost at which it was purchased minus depreciation provided up to date. In the absence of cost concept, assets will be shown at their market values, which will depend on the subjective views of persons who furnish financial statements. Hence, consistency will be hampered. For example, a machine was purchased by Goel Limited for rupees 8 lakhs for manufacturing shows. Amount of rupees 10,000 was spent on transporting it. In addition, rupees 12,000 was spent on its installment. The total amount at which the machinery will be recorded in the books would be sum of all three items that is rupees 8 lakhs 22,000. This is also known as historical cost. Now suppose the market price of the same is now rupees 90,000. It will not be shown at this value. Further, it should be made clear that cost means original or acquisition cost only for new assets and for the old ones cost means original cost less depreciation. Dwell aspect concept. It is the foundation or main principle of accounting. It provides the very basis of recording business transactions in the books of accounts. This concept assumes that every transaction has a dual effect. That is, yielding of a benefit 
and the giving of that benefit. This means it affects two accounts in their respective opposite sides, debit or credit. Therefore, the transaction should be recorded at two places. It means both aspects of the transaction should be recorded, debit or credit. For example, if the business has acquired an asset, it must have given up some other asset, such as cash. There must be a dual entry to have a complete record of each business transaction. An entry should be passed in the receiving account and an entry of the same amount in the giving account. The receiving account is termed as debtor and the giving account is called creditor. Thus, every debit must have a corresponding credit and vice versa with the same amount. Thus, the dual concept is commonly expressed in terms of fundamental accounting equation. Assets is equal to liabilities plus capital. The above accounting equation states that the assets of a business are always equal to the, to the claims of owners or outsiders. Accounting period concept. All the transactions are recorded in the books of accounts on the assumption that profits on these transactions are to be ascertained for a specified period. This is known as accounting period concept. Accounting period refers to the period of time at the end of which the financial statements of an enterprise are prepared to know whether it has earned profits or incurred losses during that period and what exactly is the position of its assets and liabilities at the end of that particular period. Thus, this concept requires that the balance sheet and profit and loss account should be prepared at regular intervals. This is necessary for different purposes like calculation of profit, ascertaining financial position, tax computation, etc. Further, this concept assumes that indefinite life of business is divided into small parts. These parts are known as accounting periods. It may be of one year, six months, three months or one month. But mostly one year is taken as one accounting period which may be a calendar or a financial year. As per accounting period concept, all the transactions are recorded in the books of accounts for that specific period of time. Hence, goods purchased and sold during 2013, rent, salaries, etc. paid for 2013 are accounted for and against that period only that is 2013. Matching concept. This concept is based on the accounting period concept. The most important objective of running a business is to ascertain profit periodically. The determination of profit of a particular accounting period is essentially a process of matching the revenue recognized during that period and the costs to be allocated to the period to obtain the revenue. It is thus 
a concept of matching revenues and expected costs. The residual amount being the net profit or net loss for the period. For example, let us study the following transaction of a business during the month of December 2013. Sale cash rupees 12,000 and credit rupees 11,000. Salaries paid rupees 20,000. Commission paid rupees 11,500. Interest received rupees 5000 rent received rupees 1140 out of which rupees 140 received for the year 2012 carriage paid rupees 200 postage rupees 300 rent paid rupees 1200 out of which rupees 50 belong to the year 2011 goods purchased in the year for cash rupees 11500 and on credit rupees 5000 depreciation on machine rupees 2000 now let us record the above transactions under the headings of expenses and revenues expenses side salary 20000 commission 11500 carriage 200 postage 300 rent paid 1200 less rupees 50 for 2011 that is total amount of rent paid will be 1150 goods purchased cash 11500 credit 5000 total goods purchased 16500 depreciation on machine 2000 total expense side 51650 now revenue side sales it includes cash sales of 12000 and credit sales of 11000 that is total sales rupees 23000 interest received rupees 5000 rent received rupees 1140 less rupees 140 for 2012 that is total rent received will be rupees 1000 total revenue side is rupees 29000 in this example expenses have been matched with revenue revenue rupees 29000 expenses rupees 51650 this comparison has resulted in loss of rupees 20650 if the revenue is more than the expenses it is called profit if the expenses are more than revenue it is called loss this is what exactly has been done by applying the matching concept therefore the matching concept implies that all revenues earned during an accounting year whether received or not received during that year and all costs incurred whether paid or not paid during the year should be taken into account while ascertaining profit or loss for the year quick revision expenses are matched with the revenue generated during a period goods sold for cash is an example of revenue matching concept states that the revenue and the expenses incurred to earn the revenue must belong to the same accounting period the cost concept states that all fixed assets are recorded in the books of accounts at their purchase price realization concept this concept states that revenue from any business transaction should be included in the accounting records only when it is realized. Revenue is said to have been realized 
when cash has been received or right to receive cash on the sale of goods or services or both has been created for example shield jeweler received an order to supply gold ornaments worth rupees 18 lakhs they supplied ornaments worth rupees 16 lakhs up to the year ending 31st december 2013 and rest of the ornaments were supplied in january 2014 the revenue for the year 2013 for shield jewelers is rupees 16 lakhs mere getting an order is not considered as revenue until the goods have been delivered objective evidence concept this concept states that those transactions can be recorded in the books which are backed by some physical evidence or proof invoices and vouchers for purchase and sales bank statements for amount of cash at bank physical checking of stock in hand etc are examples of objective evidence which are capable of verification without close adherence to this principle the confidence of many users of financial statements could not be maintained for example the transaction for the purchase of materials may be supported by the cash receipt for the money paid if the same is purchased on cash or copy of invoice and delivery chalan if the same is purchased on credit similarly receipt for the amount paid for purchase of machine becomes the documentary evidence for the cost of machinery and provides an objective basis for verifying this transaction accrual concept the essence of the accrual concept is that revenue is recognized when it is realized that is when sale is complete or services are given and it is considered immaterial whether cash is received or not similarly according to this concept expenses are recognized in the same accounting period in which they help in earning the revenue whether cash is paid or not an exception to this general rule is the preparation of cash flow statement whose main purpose is to present the cash flow effects of transactions during an accounting period thus to ascertain correct financial position of the enterprise for an accounting period we make record of all expenses and incomes relating to the accounting period whether actual cash has been paid or received or not therefore as a result of the accrual concept outstanding expenses and incomes are taken into consideration while preparing final accounts of a business entity so students let us summarize what we have learned in this module accounting is the business language by which its financial position is communicated to the audience and to make sure that communication is done properly accounting concepts are framed accounting concept refers to the basic assumptions which serve the basis of recording actual business transactions the important accounting concepts are business entity money measurement concept going concern concept accounting period concept cost concept dual aspect concept realization concept accrual concept objective evidence and matching concept 
business entity concept assumes that for accounting purposes the business enterprise and its owners are two separate entities money measurement concept assumes that all business transactions must be recorded in the books of accounts in terms of money going concern concept states that a firm will continue to carry on activities for an indefinite period of time accounting period concept states that all the business transactions are recorded in the books of accounts on the assumption that profits of transactions is to be ascertained for a specific period of time accounting cost concept states that all assets are recorded in the books of accounts at their cost price dual aspect concept states that every transaction has a dual effect whereas objective evidence concept states that only those entries should be recorded in the books of accounts which are supported by some physical evidence like invoice or voucher thank you